Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Freshly Pressed. This is episode 50 and you know it's a milestone for us. Today with, we, we have with us Hero Darky Dark, uh, the creator of Relentless Bullied Hero, uh, which is crowd, crowdfunding on Kickstarter right now. Welcome to the show, right? Yeah, it's great. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> So um, tell us a bit about yourself, your your background, um, brief history, and you know, uh, tell us what got you interested in the comics in the first place. Maybe growing up, and you know, uh, after, uh, and more recently as as a writer and a creator. Yeah, so you know, I I have older siblings, so for a lot of time I was watching what they were watching. So that's how I got into shows like you know. Uh, like the Superman animated shows, the Batman animated shows, Justice League, a lot of different kind of anime, manga, like um, Dragon Ball, Naruto, so that, so that always was like that background. I was exploring different genres, and then from there it was kind of like a snowball effect. Well, you know, it went from that to you know mimicking the hill, then thinking, you know, well, my power be in this world, and then over and over again until I was creating my own stories and such. Nice. Nice. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, what, what's, what's usually your like inspiration for writing? Um, like how did you get interested in, in writing, uh, comic books? Oh, well, it started back in the high school where we had this reading, but well not reading, but like writing assignments where we had to basically like create a story. So I created a story. It was more horde based about a classmate and then us basically dealing. It basically was a horror story, but featuring our class. And so I thought I kind of had like so much fun doing it. I was just like, wow, I should probably try and make more. And then, <laughs> you know, just a lot of. Yeah, you know, a little bit of research, but just make continuing to make my own stories, but in a more professional format than just ideas in your head as a kid. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, are you a fan of particular uh, style of comics? Like, do you like manga more, or do you like Western comics more? Uh, I say currently, I'm more into manga as it has more at least current stuff that i'm more into but i still read regular western comic like rogue sun that's a western comic that i'm really i'm really loving and such gunslinger spawn uh, gunslinger spawn that's another one that kind of stuff. yeah nice so tell us a bit about uh tell us a bit about your comic book um relentlessly bullied hero um and you know give us a pitch and tell us what is it all, all about without uh you know obviously without spoiling it <laughs> <laughs> well yeah so um basically uh lens sleep hill it features zeal he's a new gen hill now he's called new gen hill because recently well not too recently but uh a couple of months ago a town or city star hill it's like the batman the superman the all might he died, so called. That left like a huge vacuum in many ways in society. So that caused a lot of new heroes to step up, and it caused a lot of other heroes to gain prominence. So usually they call those group of heroes new gen as new generation of the heroes compared to the last one. And so of course, you'll see that with that star hero's death, society kind of degraded a bit. It's not as though everyone's like truly a bad person but it's kind of similar to when you're when your dad is the home it's like yeah you're not exactly a bad kid but when he's not home he can sometimes act out more than what you should do 
Mm. And so he kind of sees it as, yeah, people are starting to really degrade as a society. And Zeal's a bit of an edgelord. So, of course, he really doesn't like that because he's, like, <laughs> intense. So he prefers to be, to be more serious. And so he's, he's trying his best to, if he can't exact, like, just force to just get better, at least be an example of being better. And but unfortunately for him, he's in like a binding deal with villainess. Her name's Gamora, and she's of course she's a villain. She's been at it for about nearly a decade, and she's completely bored. So she just spends all her time basically following him around to mess with him. And so it's kind of just him trying to do his best while this girl is just basically just making it harder than it needs to be. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that sounds incredibly interesting. The artwork's really stunning as well. Um, tell us, how was your experience collaborating with uh, with other people on the, um, you know, uh, on the comic? Well, they really only had to collaborate with one other person, the artist. Every, everything else with the production was, you know, done between us. Like, uh, for the most part, I was in charge of actually getting most main people wise the design and such. And so it was kinda it's kinda like a symbiotic relationship where you know, of course, as the writer creative and such, I was often the one pointing the direction of where to go, but you know, I like to give my artists their own room to be done tastes of creative as I feel like that little bit of passion and personal touch can really help make a project grow. And so, you know, a lot of times even like even like how a lot of panels or things would go, you know, even if uh let's say for consistently or continuity wise, uh something happens or like, you know, something isn't a hundred percent how I originally imagined it. If I see mm -hmm. that, you know, it still fits, it doesn't mess with continuity and stuff, I'll just be like, okay, yeah, 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 I can like that. I mean, you know, I don't mind, like, compromising. Like, um, I know in even one of the earlier earlier pages, uh, mm -hmm. we see that Zeo has his max, and it's, you know, really hazy and stuff. And in one of the original version, it, the max wasn't drawn properly. And so, you know, mm -hmm. I was asking for corrections and stuff, but... You know, I was just like, hey, I, um, yeah, you, um, you need to correct it by doing this, this. But no, keep that Hazen Max. And I actually love that. And now he <laughs> has it. Yes. That's awesome. I, I actually love it when um, when artists actually improve uh, some of the things that, that you, you've written. And and when it happens by accident, that's even much even better. Like when, when you're like, oh, hang on. This actually looks looks appropriate you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah because you know like i said since i'm mostly doing the writing and such she is like i gotta kind of like how i'm doing my job by like controlling the writing consistently you know directing wise i gotta let the artist do his job and actually make it appealing on a page to see absolutely absolutely no i uh, without the two halves, uh, you can't you can't get a comic right. So yeah, that's uh, as art is as much important to a comic as you know, as the writing. So yeah, makes sense. Good stuff. Um, so uh, tell us a bit about some the the rewards and you know uh, how what what are some of the rewards that you have in your campaign. So of course, you know, this is a basic. Um, I only have three covers. It was kind of like a wolf for me before I can't paint. I'm just like, oh yeah, I don't want to do that. There's 10, 17 different colors for one book. And I kind of, as someone who reads anime, well, some manga and such, you know, manga typically in anime, there's only like one cover. So I'm like, mm. okay, yeah, let me just keep it minimum to like two or four, depending on what's going on so that yeah, I want each cover to at least be somewhat special to like the SC2L. You know, they see a picture of it, you know, they'll just be like, oh, yeah, you know, that's that's for um, volume three because of XYZ and not just, 
yeah, I mean, is that like the the sixteenth one for SC two or? You know, I I want it to feel a, a little bit special so that they have a bit more of a connection to it. So of course, there's the three books. Um, there's the bundle deals, which is just basically like buy, mm, buying on a book with it, but at this kind of price, usually it would be like five or ten bucks off. I think, I think if you get yeah. all three, it was like fifteen off, like the total book and such. And then for every bundle, you get a free um, training card. Uh, the Colonel Sins of Gamora. Um, if you don't know, basically Gamora whole powers are. As we all know, there's the seven deadly sins, and for her, so you can go to forms, each one based on a sin, and then that specific sin can give her a certain type of power. So, like pride to gain flight, uh. super strength, you know, greed, so you can move stuff around, that kind of stuff. So, the training card would just be one of those. If you buy a bundle, it comes free. And then, um, of course, um, we have two posters, two stickers, and a bookmark. And then um, it won't be in the reward side card, but I added that backing both digitally and physically gets you some additional stuff. If you just back mm. digitally, you get the digital pack, which is basically like, you know, there was a bunch of awkward that I got commissioned that never ended up going into a book. So I'm just like, okay, yeah, mm-hmm. that digital pack would just be you getting it so you can use it for like wallpaper or like phone screen savers and such. And then nice. the exit thing that the physical people get are uh, basically I there's like two different things, uh, which will probably most likely just be like a poster and like another training card. Yeah, they'll see you so support. And the last big thing is the reporting for duty which is like a special thank you so you know if you if you're a mad lad enough to actually donate that much you know of course you get three free books uh this was like another update i did but you get three free books you got postal of your choice free a stick mm-hmm. of your choice for free the bookmark and then um basically the book itself is going to be 60 pages 52 pages will be on the story, and then you get like eight additional bonus pages, which is just gonna be like a bunch of other stuff. And then with those bonus pages, they're gonna be like a double page spread. Well, you know, it'll be the characters, the main characters, at least interacting. Mm. And then if you donate the special thank you, you can be able to submit like a design, like a hero or like villain design to also be Mm. a part of that double page spread. And possibly like, you know, since it's heels and stuff, possibly even like just end up in like a background of one of the pages in either this book or like the next book. Nice. That's very interesting. I actually love that you've given something extra in pretty much any reward tier. And also like I, I know I know a lot of times digital rewards don't get that much love, but uh, it's great that you have done something extra for even like digital backers by giving them, you know, um, all the commissioned artwork. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's yeah, amazing. Cause I figure, you know, how plants sometimes all work. So I'm like, okay, I figure if I have these things anyway, then I'm most likely, I don't say won't ever use them again, but not use them the way they were planned for. I might as well just, you know, just give them some more, some more stuff for supporting me. I mean, they are separating their, hard on cast for me so might as well treat them good back and plus it makes it um more gives them more incentive to actually back the kickstarter than just wait for me to put it on like a store or something for a cheaper price later absolutely that's that's fantastic good on you <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool um so tell us a bit about your writing style you know like how 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 far along do you actually plan your your arcs? This this is a fifty two page story, uh, and this is what this is book one. So um, this is issue one and not a volume one. So you, usually for obviously mangas are different, but a lot of comics uh, have lesser number of pages, and uh, it's already quite a good uh, good chunk. So how far along have you already planned this? You know, and uh, have you? written more than one issue right uh well yeah well you know of course you know, i'm 
why I am passionate about all my projects, like, I do have to be like somewhat realistic. So I'm always like kind of keeping things a little bit liquid to like, hey, this has a good uh, this perspective. I can easily keep it going for like a good amount of issues and rolling and such. But if it's, I won't say bad, but like very meddling, you know, I'm like, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I know how to just make it like a decent, you know, sweet sort sort story. Like maybe I won't get to everything I want to, but I can at least make it like a good enough story to us like okay people at least the people who answer would be like okay yeah you know that that was a that was a fun story but you know how um this has been received recently and the fact that you know even the fact that i got funded the way it did which even though i had like little to no audience when i started you know i didn't have that much reach most of the shows i did were like more towards the later half of the campaign you know, a few of the mistakes I had, like the, the kickstart and such that I felt like could have help, uh, help in both promotion and push my book forward. The fact that I still managed to do so well, despite mm. all that, makes you just go like, yeah, I got something, something special in my hands. So thankfully, um, issue two, I've always been written up. You know, of course, I always, I always spoke with the artist too, and he, He's basically ready to even get started on it this week, but yeah, I'm gonna give myself like another week to like do like one last quick review of issue number two. You know, give it a little mm. time so I can get a little bit more feedback for like some people who got like an early copy for one reason or another in case I want want to spice up a script. No, not spice up, but like do a little and that's up the script. And even issue three, I say I'm about one fourth of the way through. So mm. yeah, this this is not going away anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, that for sure. I think that's that sounds like a great idea, and I think the book itself looks fantastic. Um, I, I think that's why people are when when they look at it, the artwork as well as the the story, they kind of uh, I, I think they're able to relate to the story, and you know that that's why it's getting. Uh, all the success that there is getting right now, so it's great. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite things is I like I'm I'm someone who can get a little bit bored quickly. So you know, if I'm someone who's like, if the conversation doesn't interest me, I'll try to hope that you can keep it short, like a couple of minutes before you can move on. So I always like mm. to make interesting concepts as like, okay, you know, that's engaging. It's getting in different ways, and it's able to get you at least invested in one way or another. So I was always, I was always someone who, even if the idea sound a little bit unorthodox or a little bit odd, mm. I was always just like, well, why not tell it? You know, like, I feel like the issue a lot of people have nowadays is that they're always trying, they're always, they're either always trying to make like the next Lord of the Rings or Star Wars or, yeah. you know, they, they not making stories because they have a great idea. They're trying to make stories like seem like they're making the next sex experience. And, mm. you know, it's like, mm. I'm not saying you can't do that, but I feel like you're aiming, you're trying to be so prestige. You end up being a little bit up your own a with a little bit too much. <laughs> As Instead of just making sure that you think of both engaging to actually reading long, but it, it's just a lot of, blah 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 mm, but, yeah, I'm, mm. I'm not even i'm up not afraid to even like just take a little bit of a yeah jab at myself my own writing because you know actually then basically all what they tell the main character literally gets you know kind of messed with by someone else so it's not like oh yeah no one's ever gonna challenge him no one ever just gonna make fun of him for like something dumb he does you're not mm. instantly wrong if you don't agree with every single thing he says. It's just, mm. it's, it's a fun underdog story with both the mm. struggle, the solution, and and not just like fake struggle, like how a lot of people be like, oh, I'm just oppressed, or oh, yeah, I, I just don't have the magic system of the world. But actually, I have the super, super strongest. Like, no, no, he, I mean, I won't say like he sucks, sucks, like he's the last place in everything, but. You know, it's very obvious that he's structured in the world. You know, he doesn't mm -hmm. have friends or, like, other heroes he can call on, which, yes, the villain do make 
well, the villainess does make fun of him for it because he's like, yeah, you're so uh, gloomy. No one wants to hang around you. <laughs> and that's why you always think these people around. But, you know, it's one of those things where I was like, yeah, that is all true. But, you know, I'm the story. The fun is seeing him wind up. So, you know, as mm. he, well, I was like, yeah, you know, he has his mom feels like, ooh. Yeah, I, I would not be in his situation. You know, seeing <laughs> both his determination and seeing how him himself grow and seeing if maybe he can make a difference mm. one way or another, how mm. society currently is, is like a fun way. That is amazing. And that's that's such a such a unique thing to explore as well. And I, I, and I 100% exp- uh, uh, like agree with you on like, People might have a big vision of what they want to do, uh, but that vision should not deter you from telling like a, a really good uh, story. You know, like that, that's the it. It should stories should always feel personal or not personal in the sense they should feel small enough so everyone can relate to it. They can have like a grand vision and you know can be part of like a bigger world that you're you're building. And that's that's where all the fun and expansion of the whole, you know, um, of the story comes from. So, um, yeah, that's that's why world building is such an important part of it as well, right? So, ah, so like world building, just make sure that it's it's just fun to read into. I mean, let's be honest. How many times do you read something because you want a grand story, then you just want to read something to be entertained for like, you know, a good couple of minutes before you actually go back to your life and. I'm not saying you exactly. can't also be that grand inspiration, but you know, this being good media can actually kill you a lot. Because I'll be honest, while I respect you know, Lord of the Rings and Star Wars, they're not my favorite series. My favorite series <laughs> is stuff like surprisingly Beyblades, you know, Dragon Ball Naruto, that kind of stuff. And while those yeah. are series that are like all very deep on many levels, it's you know, it works. Yeah, very true, very true. I mean, it, it, also, if you think about it, uh, even Lord of the Rings and, and Star Wars, for that matter, are uh, stories about characters, right? Like, they're stories about the journey that these characters actually take, or they have to take due to the circumstances they, they are in. So, I mean, it, it does tell a story of a, a grand uh you know uh at a grand scale but if you think about it lord of the rings the story about frodo taking that journey and you know sam taking that journey with frodo and you know, things like that and then and, um what these characters have gone through so it can be it can be very um it can be a very intimate story as well yeah i i yeah. I, I love what you're doing with this so yeah it's great <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you but, uh, cool yeah. um uh, so, uh, I, I, you know, this, I'd love to do this segment where I, I love to put people on the spot <laughs> and, uh, uh, and ask them, um, uh, say like, what's, what's your like top five pop culture, um, things, you know, it could be anything from like an anime or a manga or, or, you know, like, uh, or movie or, you know, uh, anything that you that you always keep coming back to, you know, um, as anything that you love very much. Um, well, I, I say one is definitely My Hero Academia. Yeah, if if you read it, you'll know that this story does have, like, heavy inspiration for me. You know, I just I just love the setting, love how the world works. It was just very inspirational for me to just be, just to be writing and making a story where it's like, okay, I can tell both, like, a serious story and such but i can also you know experiment a bit and then explore a little bit different aspect that you don't always get into and then there's stuff like surprising about beyblades the metal saga it was just a show that i loved as a kid and even even when i watched it when i was older it's like you know how sometimes you watch something as a kid and you're just like oh yeah it's good and then you know when you get older it's like yeah maybe that wasn't as good yeah i was surprised when we watched that i'm just like oh wow this actually wasn't that that bad like it's actually like yeah yeah pretty actually decent show but, and then of course um justice the unlimited very big inspiration 
you know, seeing, I don't know, to me, that has some of the best interpret- interpretations of, interpretate, no, I think I'm saying it right, interpretation, and whatever, yep. of like many of the superheroes we know and love, which, you know, based like a gold mine, um, mm. of course, always got a, always got Sal Dragon Ball Z, you know, apparently the most, if I ever got captured by like the Mexican cartel, I know how to get them, let them let me go. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see this four and then what would be my number five I mm. guess that'll just be hmm, let me I'll say that will probably be yeah yeah I'll, I'll, I'll just be simple I'll just go on another anime that'll be Naruto mm. isn't it beautiful Naruto <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh do you know do you know this uh I saw this yesterday that uh of all people McDonald's is actually making uh an anime with with the creators of Naruto. <laughs> oh wow. Oh yeah, I heard about that. I was like no way. <laughs> yeah. It it did seem like a fake trailer. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, Naruto is great. Like I, um, I think the the problem happened with me was um, I I when I started watching Naruto, it it was already there was already so much of it. I think uh, it was like kind of like One Piece, right? You just can't start One Piece today. It's just impossible. There's so much of it. <laughs> I say you, you know? could. It just depends on both. It depends how much you want to binge. Because I remember, I technically speak, I never started watching One Piece till like they they got like a fast time skip and then dress well. Mm. And of course, I didn't do it all in like one day. You know, I just watched like five, ten. Is, granted, I was in the high school, so I have a lot more free time. But yeah, I just watched like five, ten ish. I'll just read a manga and then, you know, yeah, it was slow burn, but like eventually, you know, like. A couple of weeks, months, you reach the end. I think the issue a lot of people went into is that they're trying to, they're trying to enact binge culture on One Piece, where it's like, oh yeah, I just watched it in a week and stuff. But it's like, yeah, you can't do it. Like, don't worry about just catching up. Just focus on just mm. enjoying the story, and you should be fine. Like, just think about it like, um, what would be the good? Think about it like, um, reading up on old comics. You know, well, mm. Mm. it was like, yeah, of course, you're reading up on like decades of comics, but just because those decades of comics, that doesn't mean that, okay, you can just binge through a week. It's like, no, you don't have to, you know, like maybe mm. one weekend you can read like the first 10, 15 issues of like the, like the 60 version. And then, you know, maybe if you, for work, you need to take a break and the next time you can read another 10 or so on a weekend, you know, this People need to learn how to just enjoy things again instead of just being, <laughs> you know. I feel like a lot of people do it not because they just want to win the show, but just because they want to be a part of the conversation. So instead of just mm. enjoying the media, they're just trying to like speed one through it so that they can just jump on the next discussion. Mm, mm. Yeah. No, I think I think that's fair. That's a fair call. Uh, yeah, I, I did did catch up. Naruto with the with the shorts and I, I think that was fine. Uh yeah. I yeah, yeah. But it was great. I, I actually love uh, Naruto and the whole it kind of bridges the gap between like, you know, young adult and uh, and pretty much anyone can watch it. That's it's like a truly all ages show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if, yeah sure. if you watch some like some of the some of the stuff made for the kids uh, a lot sometimes they they kind of inter- like insult your intelligence and we, we like naruto is not like that it it actually uh, pretty much anyone can enjoy that show you know uh, kids kids and parents all all can actually enjoy that show right now yeah that's um that's similar to what I was mentioning before while um speaking about how how just because like shows like naruto Bleach and Dragon Ball aren't like, at least on the surface level, these grand adventures. You know that doesn't mean that they don't have 
they lay out the storytelling that can't be appreciated as you age. Because, you know, of course, as a kid, you're more of the uh, punch, punch, action, action, you know, very easy to understand emotional moments. But as you grow, you can very easily just appreciate, like, the more finer details, like, you know, the the lot of between what it means to be a ninja and then how, you know, that can be a cool experience and such. Yeah, absolutely. 100% agree on that. That's awesome. Um, we're coming close to time, but uh, uh, before we before we go, uh, I would love for you to you know uh, have a have the stage and you know pitch the book to the audience like once again. You know, just just a quick uh, five minute spiel of of, of the book. Uh, yeah, sure. So um, yeah. Uh... Yeah, I guess I'll just address different things. So, so of course, for the book, I remember one time I was just mentioning about, you know, the book, and then someone asked me, oh, yeah, don't you think that um, deconstruction of heroes, he, he heard, like, the opening part about society degrading a bit, and it's like, yeah, don't you think, like, deconstruction of heroes are a little bit old? And I had to um, correct them and kind of want to assert anyone that this isn't going to be, like, the boys level of like or injustice level of deconstructing heroes where I'm just like, oh yeah, all the heroes are just horrific, horrible person. Yeah, they actually did. Yeah, <laughs> so having heroes in real life are dumb and stupid and you know, blah blah blah. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, they're gonna be like of course they're gonna be like, you know, heroes that are jerks, heroes that don't do the job and cop and such, but it's not done out of like a spite or like a real fixation or just, you know, just some I call it like drama, drama farming or whatever you want to call it, but it just dump for like the setting as, you know, that's just what he's seeing and he wants to change it. And so I say it's less like a deconstruction, more like a reconstruction as we go into this point, different thing like, okay, yeah, how do heroes affect society? Like, what does it mean? In what way? How can you even go about it? And then what does being a hero mean to like different people, different background and such and so it's more of like a reconstruction that we're just exploring how you know this basically like we'll see like he'll form to like his best self in real time mm. and you know of course you know when it's really heal it's not gonna be an easy time so you know we don't have to be seeing the struggle you know of course this deal will have to go through a couple of changes and you know, go through all, all the trial and tribulation that comes with it. Mm. Mm. Sounds fantastic, and uh, you know, it's it's a it looks like a very interesting story. It looks like a fantastic artwork. If you see, look at the the Kickstarter page, you can see a lot of inner pages on there. They've done um, exceptional work on it. So you know, uh, check it out, back it, and bring this project to life. Thank you for coming on the show, Hero. Appreciate it. I appreciate your time today. And, you know, uh, 